Welcome back to All G's. Sometimes All G's react. And today, we're going to be reacting to the Cat Williams interview with Uncle Shay. I have not watched this. I'm going to react to the whole thing, but I'll be breaking it up in parts. So let that be known. This is breaking it up in parts. I'm even probably going to be doing it in parts because I have about two hours before I got to be somewhere. And I think this is two hours and 46 minutes. Okay? So let's get started. Because you've made a safe place for the truth to be told. You know what I mean? And I have watched all of these low-brow comedians come here and disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight-up lies. <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here lying to you about it. You gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you scold Friday after next. The one I was in, I wish all all of America fell a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that we haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. This man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was going to be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Williams was going to be was gonna be the Santa Claus. Now, let's three quick points. You mean in Hollywood they cast a five-foot-five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds? <laughs> That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was going to play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him why has he played a woman in more movies than he's played a man? Mm. Well, I didn't know that. You shouldn't be able, you wouldn't let an a, a, a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act, because Ricky Smiley can't act. Mm. He told you the story about when the movie came out, where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. You telling this man, you stole that. Oh, so he can get his name in the same sentence. With a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody, it should have been my role. Everybody on the scene. Why do you think no cast member has ever said anything? He could have played that role like you. I thought he, he Sir, was... Sir, no one... Why no... He was with KD? He beat up Terry Crews? Why nobody know this story? You talking about in Hollywood, they switched off roles. You take this and he... What? So Ricky, Ricky Smiley knows this, and I don't know why he would lose a child and come on the air and start lying. That's why people believe in rituals right there. It's because, well, why would he lie? I don't know why liars lie, but I can tell you this. We auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes. I was audition number 201. 200 black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all 201 of us was auditioning and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days? The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom, and that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, humbly, Guys, if we talk about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy, right, where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or Facts. what the circumstances are. Facts. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. So considering that's the real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was going to play Money Mike. 
No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. I <laughs> wasn't in the bloopers. <laughs> and, and here's the other thing. Everything that Money Mike said, Cat Williams wrote. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? <laughs> you can't say my lines, I wrote them. He on Ricky That's Smiley. That's how I already, already know that I'm going to be funnier than you. What he told everybody was, Cat Williams, eh, eh, don't nobody know who he is? I'm on the radio. I'm with Steven Said. Everybody know me. That's what he told everybody that would listen to on the set. That's the truth of the matter. He was so egregious. Not now. Then. He was so egregious that, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years. Mm. He was so egregious, I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Did he wear a dress in it? You bet he did. It's in my contract. Why would you put that in your, in your contract, Cat? Eh? That's where he's a believable actor. Him and Tyler Perry can't play a man to save their life. <laughs> they play good women. And I believe that the best actor should be in the best role. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, because when we released that clip and he said that, you responded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to play, play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So that he knows is a lie. So why would he say that? Because he's a liar. <laughs> Nobody knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018? You came to see me at the comedy store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. Like, what doesn't line up? I This is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business <laughs> and it's a man unit. Then you ask it, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. It's the same Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over cable and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You would have to have range. I played a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. I don't know, I don't know, Cat. We might not let you drink anymore. But you, you, I mean, we ain't got I'm not feeling by a law. I've had a sip. Less than you. <laughs> the truth don't need motivation. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He don't even look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he his arms off his stomach sitting on him. Why I'm not a movie star. We never wrote anything. Remember, when Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't write like jokes. Album. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon, they're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Can I say that again for the audience? They're... What? Hey, look. Hold on. I don't want to make this longer than it already is, but Sid had some jokes. Like, he had some jokes. I don't know if they stolen. I don't know if someone else wrote them. I don't know none of that. But what I'm saying is Sid had some jokes. Okay? So, for, for me, it's like, is he a good movie star? I'm going to be honest with you. No. And a lot of a lot of comedians do not transition well into being quote unquote movie stars. It's hard for you to shake off the funny. You feel me? It's hard for you to shake that off. So I don't think Sid could have ever been one. I just recently, maybe a year, maybe, maybe like a whole year ago, just seen Chris Rock in like a serious film. And the film was good, 
But at the same time, in the back of your mind, you're like, like you still see them in a particular way. So I get what he's saying about like he couldn't be no movie star. So bad that they're not available on Netflix or Tubi. You don't think Sam's a good, a, a good comedian? The world doesn't think that, sir. I have 12 comedy specials. <laughs> he has four specials that are not available on Netflix or Tubi. <laughs> There's nobody <laughs> like me in the business. Man, he's on the street. <laughs> said that Getting a Netflix special is easy. I have 12 specials. Guess how many pay I got? Zero. Why is he allowed to have conversations about real stand-up people? We do not let people who are on the juice discuss real athletes. That's all. As a journalist, that's all. That's, that's all. all I can do. I don't have hardly any resentment any of these entities because I can't be jealous. I've never seen them have anything that I ever wanted. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, well, listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her and that she's never been interviewed anywhere. And now, understand, I'm not talking about one person. What I just told you applies to seven people. How they all end up with that? <laughs> you know, part of what you get. I came in this business saying I was going to expose. All, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way, you know why they take it the wrong way. Look, man, you can only lie for so long. And eventually, things will come to the light. It don't matter what it is. Okay, some people get a good run with they lie. They get twenty years, thirty years. Like to run a lie for like thirty years, that's pretty good. But eventually, the truth does come out. So he's not. That's 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 just factual. That's just factual. The truth is the light. Hold on. Unless you're the only person who knows the truth. You never tell anyone else. No, you're the only person, if you tell a lie and you're the only person there who knows the truth of what happened and you take it to your grave, that's the only way the lie lives. That's it. But very few people take their lies to the grave or even keep their story straight. 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show, there being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any comedy club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A. he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No, we've never heard of that before that person or still. He got a point. I never heard of Kevin until movies. And then I didn't know Kevin did stand up till after the movies. Since that person, what do you think a plant is? Maybe people don't understand the definitions of these words. Mm. Excite you. Your soda has the amazing new iPhone 15 Pro. With a stunning titanium design. He just did his documentary with Chris Rock where he showed you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. Yeah, it was. So how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It did happen. It did happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies. But Justice Smollett going to keep lying until you say we don't believe you. <laughs> like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe 
that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? Mm -hmm. These are some powerful people. What do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul to Hollywood is? Just to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal, it's a, it's a consortium. They, they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. Ooh. But I'm not. He's saying Gary Owens can't get in because he ain't part of the group. He's saying you can't get in because you ain't part of the group. He said you got the skin tone and you've been in the business for 25 years, and they still won't let you in. Scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the access and resources, and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, boy. Let's <laughs> see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Wow. Because Shannon Sharp got to be a different person than that other person. Absolutely. And he always was. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change when I change teams. That remains the same. That's how a legacy is built. So I, all of these shortcut takers, I, I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there, it's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. Well, you wonder what they did. To get <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> they pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. I can't. Uh, that's true. Even our boy Patrice O'Neill, like, made that known years ago when he was on radio. He was like, I try to keep it as real as possible, but, well, he didn't say but, he said like, however, I still have, quote unquote, his words, some Jewish people behind me, so therefore, there's some things I don't talk about. Like, he let that be known a long time ago. So that just lines up with what Kat's saying. They made a bad decision and aligned themselves with drugs. And I interviewed them all. What drug? What? And guess what, Shannon? What? Nobody had a great story. Nobody had a great story of what meth had done for them, what crack had done for them, what cocaine had done for them, what heroin had done for them, what speed had done for them. Nobody had them stories. Everybody's story was I had my life together. And then I decided to do this dumb thing. True. I don't know why I'm looking over here. True. I'm sorry. You know what my camera's up here. True. When you listen to enough stories, man, you'll be like, you know what? No one has anything good to say about this. Maybe I shouldn't do it. And I lost my life. I lost my house. I lost my cars. I lost my reputation. And I'll... I'm now out here sucking penis. They changed their whole persona, and, and then they hate me for it. And generally, I'm just too big to comment or make a statement about it or do a live or any of that. But when it gets to be a whole grouping of these guys, I got to come. See, Mike, Mike Epps said something similar. He was like, because I do the same thing as some of these other dudes, it's like I can't comment on the craft that they do. Because if I comment on it, I'm hating. But if I was just a fan and I said what I was saying, I wouldn't be hating. It would just be, just be my opinion. You know what I'm saying? He says like, his opinion got pulled away because he do the same things as these other dudes within the craft. So I kind of, I kind of get, kind of feel like this is the same thing with like what Mike Epps said. And talk to Shannon. <laughs> the 
worst movie I think I've ever seen. Ice Cube in and Faison was Torque. I just had to say that because, like, him talking about Faison, I had to think. I was like, I didn't know Faison was supposed to be a comedian. I thought whenever they just needed a real big black dude for a particular stereotypical role, they used Faison for it. I didn't know he was supposed to be a comedian at all. You know what I'm saying? You having an unnatural allegiance to losers is not working. No, I ain't got no allegiance to the man. But you gotta admit the role that he played, Big War, I mean Big Perm and Friday now. You gotta give him credit for the role now. Come on now. Let me ask you a question. Yes. If what you're saying is correct, why wasn't he in next Friday or Friday after next? I mean his role, I mean It wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. There was a lot of people that didn't that appeared in the first one that weren't in the second one. Cat. I'm just telling you why. 